This is our current holding tank. It came out of the camper that I um, took apart for the camper frame and it works okay, but it's kind of small and we have had it overflow when, when it didn't get pumped like it should have. Um, so I'm gonna build a bigger one. And I want one big enough where I can maybe put a automatic float, float control in it. So I've got some rough measurements. I know the maximum length and the maximum width and the maximum height it can be. And we're gonna go home and make another one and probably I will have to redo all of these drain pipes because they're kind of wonky and I would like something a little neater. I'll get my son David to help me. He's a, he's a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to putting all this stuff back together. This is a fuel tank access hatch from a small boat that is no more. And it's close enough to the size and it's in good enough shape that I'm going to use this and save myself a lot of work. So by using this existing top, it put some constraints on my measurements. Gotta, the outside of the flange has to fall inside that flange and the inside of the wall needs to fall right in here. So I've got figuring a one inch flange and I'm measuring carefully. So I think the outside of the flange needs to be 27 and 5 eighths by 62 and 5 eighths. So I'm starting out with those measurements. So the upper frame is made and I've checked and double checked and I'm pretty sure I have the dimensions right. This is the outside measurement, and this is 5 eighths. And if I put 3 eighths plywood, which I have over there, it should, it should be just right. Um, cross that fingers, because if I make it wrong, I'm gonna have to do a lot of work on that top to get it fit. And Debbie just finished up her big Detroit job. So I took down all of her uh, backboards, and I'm gonna use this 3 eighths plywood, and it's slimed up with clay on one side, which is, uh, I think that's good. That'll act like a separator to get the epoxy off. So I'm gonna cut it. Probably be a lot of patches, but it's just a form for the glass work. So the top flange and the sides are together. Now this is 100% glue joint because I'm gonna take a big uh, round over router bit and round this over so the fiberglass can round over easy. We didn't wanna hit any staples or nails. But the rest of it, like the little splice here, and around the bottom and the inside, it can be nailed, screwed, stapled, it doesn't matter. Because this is a, what I would call a waste mold. If it comes off, it's gonna come off in splinters. Okay, top is clamped and all the corners are on and nailed, uh, or stapled actually. And the nice thing about this little project is I can use up all the crap that I should have thrown away, but I haven't thrown away, and now it's useful. So I think after lunch, I can probably take all these clamps off and we'll build the bottom. Um, I thought long and hard about sloping the bottom to make the heavies come to the pump, but I think I'll just slope the whole thing and make the construction a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna make the bottom flat. I will chamfer the corners with some big uh, chamfers to try to keep solids from settling in the corners like it, like it likes to, try to get it to come toward the pump. But anyway, it's all good. Okay, we have a top. This is gonna get radius got the insides and I got the corners braced. Now the bottom is going to be about here. So I'm going to turn it over and I think I'm going to run an inch and a half uh, ledger all the way around and some in the middle and that will bring the bottom up inch and a half plus three eighths uh, blah, 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 one and seven eighths. Is that right? Yeah. And since this is 12 that'll make it more or less 10. That's what I was shooting for. And with that in the top, it's going to be like 10 and a half, but that's close enough. So, yeah, we're going to turn it over and put a ledger and drop the bottom in. All right, framing for the bottom is done. I'm going to flip it over, cut that sheet of plywood and drop it in place. And I may or might even, yeah, I guess I'll put some nails in it. And then we'll put some uh, chamfers on the corners. And, yeah, come along. Got a bottom. Let's see if it'll fit. Yep, it's gonna be short on that end, but that's okay because the uh, chamfer is gonna cover it. Not too shabby. So I'll cut some of the scraps and I'm making a chamfer around the bottom. So we won't have sharp edges and we won't have corners for solids to build up in. And, uh, pretty 
you're proud of that cut. They're a little short, but we can drop a little piece in at the end. And on this end, I'm gonna have my two um, suction discharges, suctions. I'm gonna put two instead of one. Um, so I don't think I'll do a chamfer. I think I'll just do a little radius with, with some clay because the suction needs to be down on the ground. All right, let me staple this up. And uh, we're almost ready to run the router up here. Well, we're all ready. I ran the router and it didn't do too good. The wood just kind of disintegrated, especially like right here. So I got some patching to do. I think I might just do it with clay, make it easier on myself. So I went to see the paint fairy this morning and I got two about half full five gallon buckets of macro epoxy 646. So uh, good stuff. It's been sitting for a while. I got to mix it up. And then we're going to put our first layer on the inside of the uh, form for the holding tank. So our form is ready. I clayed all the joints and kind of rounded them over. Put uh, packing tape on this curve. Try to do it without bubbles, but that didn't really happen. Um, but I don't want it to stick to this. And I sprayed the inside real good with uh, Poly's 2500 release agent. So, if I can paint it without the packing tape pulling up, get one coat on there, we'll be off and running. First coat, not too bad. The clay stayed put, like in the corners where I did the radius and everything. Um, the tape did not stay, it's all peeling off, so I'm gonna have to rip it off in a second. Um, but what happens is, when I try to go back and add some more, then the first little bit lets go of the clay and goes back on the roller. So I stopped doing that, we'll let it cure. Um, I'll remove this tape and I guess I'll clay that corner to keep it from sticking and we'll put another coat and then we'll start putting fabric. So a few hours later, first coat is dry and I did rip off the tape because it was failing. So I have no paint from here around onto the top. And I really don't want the paint to stick to that, so I sealed the edge of that plywood where I did the round over with oil based clay, and then I smeared the top with uh, some tree wax. And I'm gonna do another coat. Um, and I found my tripod so I can actually do some film footage. Um, it was right in front of my face, but you know how it is when you're looking for something. So my buddy Carl is part owner of an industrial coating company. They go in all the chemical plants, the refineries, and in my history it was water treatment plants. And these guys are trained in all the different types of fall protection and all the different applications. They do sandblasting. You know, they have all kind of specialized equipment. Um, so typically he'll do a job. The engineer will spec the paint and the color. Um, it's not usually his choice. They'll do the job. They'll keep some of the paint as um, touch up for his warranty period. And after that, all this, all this paint becomes a liability to him. He's got to get rid of it. He's got to typically pay to get rid of it. You can't just like dump it in the yard. You can't pour it down the drain, obviously. So um, you know, I have a long history with him and he trusts me. So he, he'll give me whatever he has that he doesn't have a use for anymore. Um, I don't get to pick my colors and I don't get to pick my brands, but uh, I, I get the epoxies and um, If it wasn't for that this would project wouldn't happen because these paints are way more expensive than polyester resins I'd just be using a polyester resin like boat fiberglass Most of these things are probably not good for your health and I don't wear a proper respirator But I'm not a I don't do this day in and day out either, you know a couple hours a day for a few days out of the year I'm, I'm okay with that i keep my fans going anyway it, this stuff is interesting to me all the different types of products and how it reacts and uh normally i have good results but uh yeah so i did a test piece last time i had some paint mixed up i put down two or three layers of uh different types of glass and it went down really easy it was just surprisingly easy so then i took this board and I cut it with the table saw and I tried to pry it up and it came up really easy. So and that's good. And that uh, I'm gonna be able to get this old plywood out from under this 
fiberglass box when it's finished. The disappointing thing is it's very limber. It's very rubbery. I was looking for something a little more crispy. Um, I have no doubt this is going to be strong as far as tearing and it's chemical proof, but I'm going to need something a little more, a little more, um, we're going to need something that holds the shape a little better. So I don't know whether it's been uh, right at 24 hours. Maybe I need to give it another, another day. I'm going to put it out in the sun. See if uh, it'll change overnight. But this is uh, good and bad. One, it came off the form really easy. But it's, uh, it's kind of rubbery. I was looking for something a little more uh, short. A little more uh, stiff. Yesterday, <clears throat> I discovered this epoxy paint more rubbery than I was envisioning. It kind of bugged me last night. It's just so different from my past experience with it. And even the, the paint in here, I can chip it with my fingernail. And it's not usually like that. And then the, where I mixed it, the bottom, it's kind of rubbery. So I'm thinking maybe I just didn't mix it carefully enough. Maybe I don't have enough hardener in it. I'm not ready to give up on it. So I got a cup, filled it with water, poured it in here, came up to the black line, filled it with water again, came up to the second black line. I'm gonna try to measure it differently than I did the first go around. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, our computer died, and when the compu our computer died, I lost the software that I used to edit videos. I used Wondershare Filmora. So I contacted the company, and uh, it took a few back and forth, but they granted me uh, a new new license because I purchased this stuff and I'm supposed to be able to use it forever and the new license was for an upgraded version so all the controls were different so I went through this whole video and it was just so bad that I deleted it and I'm doing it over and I, I've learned a few tricks from the new software because it has all new controls now back to this epoxy mixing this stuff is just a horrible mess it, uh, it stinks it's sticky and ended up just uh, pouring out of the five gallon bucket into the measuring cup every time. And I was able to get some pretty good results doing that. So I got a conundrum. I, um, the batch that I mixed last that I very carefully made sure I had the right proportions, kind of did the same thing. Kind of had a rubbery feel when it cured with the cloth in it. So I don't know if this is gonna be acceptable for a holding tank it's going to be more like a big giant Tupperware. Um, but I don't want to, all I have now is three coats of paint on here. I think I'm going to go ahead and use up the rest of the glass I have and get as many layers as I can get with this brown epoxy and then either switch to a different epoxy or maybe switch to polyester resin, which I got to drive to New Orleans to get, which is kind of a pain and it has a short shelf life so if i don't use it all up it's going to go bad so anyway i don't know what i'm going to do but i am going to put a few more layers of the brown uh epoxy paint and use up whatever cloth i have left this is the last of the woven cloth so this is my measure my measuring method um i think it's working pretty good I take an old cup and i put the amount of water in there that i want to use in this case i put a cup and a half of water it came up to right here so i cut the paint with the razor knife and left a little spot that I can see. And then I put another cup and a half and it came to the second mark and I cut it. So now I'm gonna go pour um, one of the parts in here until it comes to the top of this hole. And then that's just cause I remembered where it was. And I'm gonna pour the other part till it comes to the bottom of this hole and mix it up. And then later on, I can use this cup again, do, do the same thing. So I've got three coats of the brown paint on the inside of the form and I'm putting down my first layer of cloth. And I made two mistakes. One, I didn't put enough paint under the cloth. I kind of rolled it out kind of thin. It kind of skins really fast. And so when I laid the cloth down, it didn't really saturate it. Um, it didn't adhere, I guess I should say. And I kind of, I could tell what was happening when I was putting it in, but you can't really turn back. So. Um, when I did strip the form, <clears throat> I, I had some uh, spots under the bottom where it, where the paint didn't stick to the cloth, and I knew that was going to happen. 
the second mistake I made was even using this cloth. I got this off the internet. I didn't get a lot of it, and I only used a little bit because the weave is so tight and so dense that you can't hardly saturate it. I had the same problem with polyester resin. It just it resists saturation. So um, I should have just thrown all this stuff away, but I still had this piece, and you know how I am. I got to use everything I got. So I used it. Um, I kind of saturated it from the top, but the bottom was not saturated. So, you know, <clears throat> I could tell I was messing up because the, uh, the ground was not seeping through the cloth. It was staying nice and dry and pretty, and that's not, not the object. <clears throat> that was not the object here. It was to uh, have the white cloth turn very brown and get very sticky, and that's not what happened. So in spite of my reservations about the ultimate strength of this stuff, my test patch did finally get pretty stiff, considering how thin it is. So I've been steady putting layers on here. Probably have, I don't know, maybe four layers, different areas. I'm getting ready to do um, just a little piece in here. It's hard to do a lot because it if you pull on this side, it wants to pull away on that side. If you pull on this side, it wants to pull away on that side. So it's better if you kind of keep it smaller, smaller portions each time. So I went back to the paint ferry this morning and told him I wanted my money back on the macro epoxy 646. He says, you can have twice your money back because you didn't pay for it. So anyway, he gave me some more paint. I got some Dura plates, 6,000. I got a full, what, uh, four gallon unit. I got two one gallon units of the Duraplate 235. Now this is white, they've never been opened. And this has never been opened. It looks like it might be green, it's hard to tell. But anyway, uh, they both, you know, say they can do anything. But this one's supposed to have good gap filling abilities and it's supposed to be good for 100 mils. So I'm gonna use the, uh, the big unit. It mixes two to one, which makes it a little more complicated. Let's uh, let's open these up and see what it looks like. Okay, wow, look at this stuff. It is like super thick. Both the A and the B are super thick. So it's going to put a lot of millage on. I don't know how it's going to wet out the cloth. Let's mix up some. I got to go mark a pot to mix it in. It's two to one. So it's uh, one of these and two of these. Right, okay, I put a thick coat of my new epoxy on top of the brown. You can't help but put a thick coat. The stuff's like spreading sheetrock mud. And I even rolled out a little piece of um, chop mat to see if it would roll it out. And it will, but the paint's real sticky and it kind of wants to pick the edges up. But I got it down. And then I, you, I'm you, seeing, <clears throat> I'm doing an experiment here. I clamped a piece of used fiberglass structural fiberglass to some of the old brown painted fiberglass to see what that'll do and didn't say I couldn't use it on wood so I painted my beverage holder for the truckster because there was nowhere at all to put a cup down without it falling over so yeah let it sit and uh, see what happens and I got a lot left in here so I can see if it uh, gets hard in thick quantities which the brown stuff never really did to my satisfaction yesterday i tried my first coat of the duraplate 6000 it's awesome this is what i was thinking the other paint should do had some left in the bucket like i don't know it's probably a half inch in there yeah so this is more like epoxy epoxy glue and not <clears throat> the brown stuff i don't know old i don't know it just never really cured super hard i clamped this piece of fiberglass to um some of the brown layup with the gray the new gray paint and i wanted to see how good it was going adhere and it looks like it adheres 
pretty well. Okay. So this is going to start a new phase in the build of the box. I have a lot of fiberglass that somebody else laid up. I'll get this piece, and I got all these little pieces. Some of it's from the houseboat. Some of it's from a bathtub. Some of it's from the um, the center console boat. And since somebody else already went to the trouble to lay this stuff up, I don't see why I have to lay up glass all over again if I can use this. So I'm going to cut this stuff up and use it to brace the inside walls of this so I don't have to use up quite so much cloth, which I don't have a huge amount of. So I'll show you what I mean when I get a little further along. Okay, we got the Dura Plate 6000 applied to the bottom. Got it pretty thick because the bottom's kind of bumpy. And now we're going to put our stiffeners right there. And I got a little piece for the one in the middle. And then I'm going to put plastic down so it doesn't stick to my blocks. And then we got a sheet of plywood. Spread the loads, pretty thin plywood, and then some sticks, and I'm not as strong as I used to be, so I'm going to put the camera down to pick up my five gallons of water. Okay, that's it for now. That should finish the bottom, and now with my leftover stuff that I have mixed, I'm going to put some thickener with it, and I'm going to fill this little crack all the way around to make it easier when I go to sand the radius, so I don't have to sand it back quite so far and put some thickener in there. So by mixing in a little of this polyfiber, I now have a non-sag version of the Duraplate, whatever it is, 6,000. So I'm gonna put this around the perimeter. Four more stiffener plates are cut, sanded, and um, we got a clamping method figured out. Two on this end, two on this end. So I'm gonna take them off and put some paint maybe thicken it a little bit and I'll put them in there and that'll be it for the next few hours this little patch dried and I'll have uh, two sides left I'll take it outside and give it a good sand and all these all these corners will meet, need to be fared so I can glass between this glass and the glass that I put on this wall and especially on this end because I'm gonna have two big holes drilled for the um for the discharge and a spare discharge Next day, four end panels done. I love this stuff. It's dry and hard like freaking glass. You can't even scratch it with a chisel. Um, so I'm going to take all this off. And I'm going to cut and fit my panels for the two sides. And then uh, that'll be it for adding the, adding the strengthening panels. So we got everything cleaned up. I'm going to start cutting uh, and fitting and doing the clamping system for the rest of these panels. Okay, we're ready to glue. I got everything dry, clamped. And I think I'll try to mix enough glue to do one side at a time. The stuff was getting hot the last time I mixed it just to do the two ends. And this is time consuming stuff. The little bottom board goes up pretty easy just with the struts. But the sides, first I got to glue the fiberglass, put it in place and hang it with tape. And then I have to hang black plastic over it like I did on this side so that it doesn't stick to the call. And then uh, put the boards and put all the clamps. So it, it takes a little while and it's, it's hot here. It's in the 90s already. It's only 8.30 in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to take off one side. I'm going to uh, mix up some glue, put a little bit of thickener in it, and uh, go for it. So I finished my glue up about, I don't know, three and a half hours ago. But it's stupid hot here today, so the glue is hard. So I pick up all these clamps and clean this area up a little bit. Okay, all the clamps are off and it looks pretty darn good. And then I sand it or grind it, all the little bumps off. What I'm gonna do now is mix up some of this epoxy real thick and uh, fill in these sharp corners because the, the mat, the glass won't really go 90 degrees like that. But if I do a nice gentle curve, it will go that way. So I can do one here. I kind of already did it. I, I kind of already did it coming off the bottom thing, but I'll get one here and I'll do one here. And I 
kind of already did the side, but I might clean it up a little more. Yeah, and then uh, another light sanding, and then we're gonna put the rest of the cloth, and it should uh, finish her up. And then we can take the mold off the outside and uh, see what the brown stuff did to the plywood. I'm uh, thinking it's gonna be ugly, but we'll see. So once again, the Dura Plate 6000 cured hard as a rock. Now I need to sand it a little bit and it's a little early in the morning, so I'm gonna have to wait on that. I took the rest of my roll of chopped mat and ripped it into eight inch strips, which I am going to lay from here around the corner to here and vertically in these corners to brace them up. And I'm gonna switch paints. I'm gonna go with this um, Dura Plate 235, the 6000. It's just so thick that it's pretty hard to roll in the chop mat and get it all wetted out. So, um, never used this before. It's got this green oil on top, but I don't think it's going to be green. I think it's going to be white after it's mixed up. So, unfortunately, this is a four to one mix ratio, so it's going to be a little more challenging for me to get the mix right, but uh, we'll figure out something. All right, first mix is on. That worked pretty good. Um, it was 20 ounces. It didn't get, it's maybe two thirds of the way around. I may go with a bigger cup and mix. Oh, I hate to mix too much. Uh, I'll go with 30. What I'm scared of is if I start going over it again, it may or may not pull that first layer up. So I may have to stop. And I won't know that until I mix the best. But I'll mix 30 ounces. You know, we keep going. All right, I've used up all of my chop mat. I had enough to go around twice, the corners and the bottom, and I had enough to do the middle stretch three times. That's not a huge amount, but I'm not asking a lot of this thing. It's not a boat, it's not gonna go pounding through the surf. It's just gonna sit there with water in it, toilet paper and other goodies. So, uh, I, I, I'm gonna do the top next. I'm gonna let this dry. Do the top, put a couple of layers on the top. I got some uh, woven stuff. And then uh, decide if I wanna go ahead and demold it. I think I might be done. Happiness is using a new type of paint. And in four hours, it'll be set on me.
All right, four layers around the cap. Put a thin, a narrow layer, wide layer, and came back again with another narrow width layer and a wide width layer. And I believe that should tie in these panels on the side and that panel I put on the top. Most of this gets cut off. Yeah, so most of this top ledge is gonna get cut off because it can only be an inch wide and fit underneath the top I have for it. So I need to go inside and order some through holes for this end. I'm gonna put two, one for the pump and one a spare. Um, and I'm gonna order some sort of indicator for how much is in here so I can have the pump on automatic. Um, it's not a problem for me to take care of the switch and turn it on when I leave, but, but I don't wanna burden somebody else with freaking out about whether or not they're putting too much in the poo-poo tank. So I'll put it on automatic. Um, I will need one more coat of paint on the inside. I got a few more little bitty, bitty, bitty bug holes. A few more little bitty bug holes. And then I'm gonna take the frame off. You can see how strong it is. I don't anticipate it being really, really strong. I can always put more glass on the outside or I can run a two by four on the outside. But this is interior stuff, so that won't last under the trailer. I gotta get that off. See how rigid it is and see what happened to that nasty brown paint, whether it did anything. Um, yeah, so be nice. Tomorrow, I'll, uh, I'll get, it, get it out of this form. We'll see what we got.